Hello, my brothers and sisters at Cedar Crest, especially those of you who are of a darker skin tone than myself. I'm full of emotions tonight, and I wanted to share with you that I am deeply saddened and even somewhat angry at the continued problem of systemic racism in America. We're about to start our monthly Fresh Encounter prayer service, but I felt you needed to know that this prayer meeting that you will see and participate in tonight was previously recorded and it's not as up to date as it could be. So I ask you not to take that as silence regarding the injustice that has been done to George Floyd and others. We as your church leadership, we grieve with you and we pray with you over this terrible way for us to behave. It underscores our need for Jesus and for us to speak and act as he would speak and act. As your brother in Christ, I wholeheartedly stand with you and pray that Jesus will help us to find better ways to love one another and stem the tide of racism among us. As we worship through prayer tonight, please add in prayer for our nation, for our brothers and sisters of color, Pray against those that would make us more divided rather than closer together. And pray for our own reactions to all that is happening. Please know that we love you and we're with you and we're praying together as we go now into this fresh encounter time. Please remember those extra prayer requests. Thank you. Well, good evening, my brothers and sisters in Cedar Crest, and welcome to what I hope is the very last Fresh Encounter meeting that we're going to have online in this virtual COVID-19 world. Uh, as we work through uh, Psalm together tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at four different sections. The first section is a call to worship, and so we want to be engaged in that. The other sections we're going to read tell us, us different reasons why we should be worshiping this awesome God. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to end up hopefully in a place where we feel the restful gladness as we hope in the Lord Jesus. So let me start with a word of prayer, and then we'll move into the first section of Psalm 33. Father, we thank you again for your word, which speaks to us so clearly, Lord, and gives us encouragement and hope, even in times like these where things are difficult. I pray, Father, that you would help us to worship you tonight in prayer as we uh, embark on a, a journey through this psalm together. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with me. Again, I'm going to read Psalm 33, just the first three verses first. And we'll see the glory that the Lord wants to show us here. And hopefully that will produce a song in your heart. 
So let, let's read the first three verses. It says, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. We see here in these first few verses that God's people are depicted as righteous or the upright. And as such, that we need to be those kind of people that shout for joy. We're supposed to use our voices in prayer to the Lord. And then in verse 2, we see that we are to use instruments, stringed instruments. And then again in verse 3, we see this composition of both. We are to sing and we are to use these instruments. For what purpose? To bring a song, a new song to the Lord. Now, as I was studying on this, uh, sometimes it really could mean a new song that we never sang before. But it all, uh, could also mean a song that we're very familiar with, but that we're filled with a new, fresh filling of the Holy Spirit and becomes new in our praise and worship to God. So in that sense, uh, I want us to glance and glimpse and look and see the marvelous grace of our Lord. So let's take some time to sing along with Luke in this first section and worship our awesome King together. And I'll be right back with you. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. O oh, creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God seated on His throne. Come let us adore Him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of His words? can teach the one who knows all things who can fathom all his wondrous deeds behold our God seated on his throne come let us adore Our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails? Who has felt the nails upon His hand? Bearing all the guilt of sinful man God eternal, humbled to the grave Jesus, Savior, risen now to reign Behold our God, seated Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Well, I hope you had a good time of raising your voice and worshiping the Lord and in these next six verses, this next section, we're going to see the first reason why we should be worshiping our Lord. And it's because 
He is upright and He is good. So as I read through these things, look for those reasons that you see that the psalmist is writing. And maybe you'll even see other reasons why we should worship Him. Of course, we know that there are, there are countless reasons to worship our Lord. Uh, but we're going to try to confine ourselves to Psalm 33 tonight. So let me read verses 4 through 9. It says, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all His work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of His mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. <laughs> Amazing. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For He spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. This reference here to the, to the Word of God, the very breath of God, breathed out His Word. And the, the psalmist is making a lot of references here. He references back to Genesis 1. Do you remember Genesis 1 through 3? It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God spoke His word, and it came to be. God's Word is so rich, and there is, there's so much more here if we keep digging in and look further. Uh, the word logos is used here in verse 4, and it, it's the same word that we see throughout the New Testament. We talk about the living Word. Uh, we see it in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through th 3. He says, In the beginning was the Word, the logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So let's take some time now to worship the Lord because He is the living Word, the spoken Word, the revealed Word. I want you to take a moment. I want you to push pause and take some time to go to prayer and go to this living Word of God and worship Him. Say, Lord, living word, I worship you because, and then fill in that blank. And let's tell him the ways that we see in this psalm and other ways of why we worship him. He loves to hear from us. So let's do that. Let's go to him in prayer now. All right, now that you're back, uh, we're going to read the next section. It's just three verses, this one, verses 10 through 12. And I want you to see the second reason uh, that I think this psalm tells us why we should worship the Lord. Uh, verse 10 says, The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, and the plans of His heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom He has chosen as His heritage. That's amazing. In the first section, we saw that God speaks. And when He speaks, it happens. His Word is upright. In this section, we're going to see the second reason that God always prevails. He's not frustrated by mankind like some of us are. No, He's in complete control, and He rules over all of us and all the nations. We see here that the plans of man are short-lived, but it's only God's plans that go on and last forever. God rightly deserves the praise of all mankind, which we get from verse 11. But in particular, it's God's people, His chosen ones, who are described here as His heritage. So God chose Abraham, and then He chose Israel, and now His church. And to think that we are His heritage or His special possession, it's an amazing blessing for us to revel in that. Verse 12 says, Blessed are those people that He has chosen, His people. And that people as a whole, they will be blessed 
in whatever place in the world they live. In this section, I want us to pause and, and thank the Lord for choosing us. But I also want us in this prayer to pray for someone else who has yet to come into the family of God. Maybe you have your card of five people you've been praying for. Take that out and use that as well. And, and thank the Lord for choosing you. I thank Him every day. Why He chooses me? I have no idea why He chose me. It's beyond me, but He has. And I praise Him and worship Him for that. I think we should do the same thing as we read through this Psalm and then pray for somebody else to be joined into His family. So let's, let's take some time to pray for that. Welcome back. I, I hope you're, you're really enjoying this time of prayer, this worshipful time in prayer. Uh, we want to bless the Lord as He's blessed us. So our next section now in Psalm 33 is verses 13 through 19. It's a little longer section, but maybe I'll try to speak less so you can, you can follow along with me. I'll read verses 13 through 19. It says, The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all of their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him on those who hope in His steadfast love, that He may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. The section that shows us the third reason in Psalm 33 why we should worship the Lord. The Lord, He discerns everything. Nothing get past Him. He, he sits on His throne and He looks down on all of mankind. He sees all that is happening from the very outward things like this COVID-19, all the way to the very inward things, the little motivations of our heart and the sinful thoughts we may have in our minds. Nothing escapes our Lord. He sees all of that. He knows everything that we devise, things that we think will be our salvation, nothing we can invent or make, nothing that our strength can force, none of that brings our salvation. No, only God in His magnificent sovereignty is able to rescue us from any and all calamity. Those that fear the Lord, in other words, those that hold Him in such overwhelming reverence because of who He is, those He will keep in His steadfast love and He will deliver them. So let's take some time to thank Him for being the one who is truly in control and beseech Him to deliver us from whatever we need today to be rescued from. We, of course, will be asking the Lord to deliver us from this virus. Uh, but there are debilitating illnesses that people have, people we love, family members. We want them to be delivered from that. We want them to come to know Christ. The bad motivations of our heart or any one of a myriad of other things that uh, are disturbing and, and need to be rescued by the Lord. Bring them before Him, and let's uh, spend some time in that prayer. So again, I hope you have had some time really to bow your heart and bow your wills uh, before this magnificent God and worship Him. So now we're going to look at the last section of this psalm, and, and I hope it's an encouraging section to you. It's verses 20, 21, and 22. It says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope 
in you. You know, for those of us uh, that acknowledge these three reasons and all the other wonderful reasons to worship our God, we can take heart as we read these last few verses here. We can trust our God with our situation, our circumstances. We can hope in Him and He will give us rest. The whole Old Testament, you know, when God rested on the seventh day, that's a Sabbath. We can take a Sabbath within ourselves, right? We can find our rest in Him if we trust and rest in His sovereign control over all that's going on. So I, I exhort you as my brothers and sisters to find that place of rest. Wrap your arms around this loving Savior. Go to Him and He will give us peace and comfort and walk us through these difficult days. So as you're going through this, I want you to sing a final song and carry that hope and rest into your evening. And each day as you wake up, hopefully that, that new song will be in your heart as you get up each day. Uh, he is able, and we should be blessing Him every day for all that He is and all that He does. So God bless you tonight as you worshiped and as you continue to worship our Lord. Thanks. Good night. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before Let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never.
sing like never before Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name Lord, I'll worship your holy name Lord, I'll worship your holy name